U.S. President Joe Biden revealed plans for the first military airdrop of food and supplies into Gaza, following the tragic deaths of Palestinians queuing for aid. The airdrop, set to occur in the coming days, aims to address the unfolding humanitarian crisis in the densely populated region. Other nations, including Jordan and France, have already conducted similar aid airdrops. White House spokesperson John Kirby underscored that airdrops would be part of a sustained effort to provide assistance to Gaza. The initial airdrop is expected to consist of military airdrops. MREs, all the meals ready to eat. First of all, the, the biggest risk the, is uh, making sure that uh, nobody gets hurt on the ground. And so you got to locate out uh, areas to drop that you know will be safe for people so that they don't, they don't become victims of the drop itself. I mean, when you're dropping out of an airplane, again, it depends on what you're dropping. In this case, the first deliveries will be food. Um, uh, most likely the MREs, the, 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 the portable food that the military uses. Um, and so you want to be able to get it, uh, again, in a place that's safe, from, nobody's getting hurt on the ground. Um, and then you want to make sure that it's in a location that is also accessible to aid organizations to help distribute that food. So that you want, you, you want to see it as best you can, and it may not be possible in Gaza, but as best you can, a presence on the ground to help with the distribution so that the, so that it, the, the drop itself doesn't become a scene or a site of insecurity and instability, of people rushing it and getting hurt and trying to get to it. Um, and then lastly, the big challenge is making sure that it's physically in a, in a geographic location that is close to people that are, that are most in need. So there's an awful lot that goes into that. And of course then, you know, there's the, there's the whole air component of that, you know, the, the weather and the winds and the, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the need for the pilots and the aircraft to be safe as well. I mean, this is not, um, you know, uh, this isn't like a, uh, an area of a humanitarian disaster such as an earthquake or a, uh, or a hurricane site. Um, this is a war zone. Uh, so there's an added element of potential danger to the pilots and the aircraft, and we have to factor that all into. This is, this is a tough military mission to do uh, because so many parameters have to be exactly right. Um, we're going to pursue this the way we would pursue any such operation, carefully. Uh, we, we know we have to move with a sense of alacrity. We're alive to the need, uh, but, uh, but we're going to do this uh, in concert with the, our, our Jordanian partners, and again, uh, the planning will be robust on this. That said, I think, um, I don't think, I know, that we will learn from the first airdrops. And this will be a part of a sustained effort. This isn't going to be one and done. There will be additional airdrops planned and executed. And with each one, I think we'll learn more and we'll get, we'll get better at them. It's very difficult. It is extremely difficult to do an airdrop in uh, such a, a crowded environment as is Gaza. Uh, very, very densely populated, a lot of people confined to small spaces. So you want to do it in a way that you can get it to close, as close as you can to the people in need, but not in a way that puts them uh, in any danger. And so the Pentagon will be doing a raft of planning on this. They'll work their way through that. But I do want to stress that we fully expect that uh, the, the, the third and fourth and fifth one won't look like the first and second one. We'll learn and we'll, and we'll try to improve. According to the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, approximately 576,000 people in the Gaza Strip, constituting a quarter of its population, are perilously close to famine. Meanwhile, at least 115 people were killed, and over 750 were wounded in an Israeli assault on food aid seekers at the Nabulsi roundabout in Gaza City. Witnesses said Israeli forces opened indiscriminate gunfire as people gathered for flour, while Israeli officials claimed their soldiers acted defensively amid perceived threats to aid trucks. On the other hand, Oxfam has condemned the Biden administration's decision to conduct airdrops, denouncing it as a gesture to appease guilt rather than address underlying issues. Scott Paul, leading Oxfam's U.S. government advocacy work, asserted that such actions would not alleviate the crisis and called for alternative measures, including halting weapons flow to Israel, advocating for a ceasefire, and ensuring humanitarian aid access.